welcome to Awakening Within. I'm your host, Jill McPherson. Today, we are looking at the importance of communication skills in creating intimate relationships. I've personally discovered the importance of this myself from my guest today. He is a man who dedicates his life to helping people more effectively communicate so they can not only hear and understand the other, but perhaps more importantly, hear and understand oneself. He is the Director for Human Awareness Institute Ontario, and I am so pleased he is with us today. Allow me to introduce to you Eric Nagler. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> so, Eric, um, our paths have crossed because mm -hmm. you have been a huge role model for me mm -hmm. in um, how to better effectively communicate, particularly in my own uh, personal intimate relationship with my mm -hmm. husband. Um, so it's really important for me to allow viewers to have access to this kind of information. It's, right. it's very helpful. But before we get into some of that, those examples, tell us how you got into being what I'm going to call, you know, a relationship expert, a communication expert. Um, right. How did that all begin for you? Well, I, I mean, if you want to go back to the beginning, it began with my being so jealous and having such uh, inappropriate kinds of relationships that I knew that if I didn't do some self-discovery, that I would never really be able to have a good relationship. So I've been looking at myself and Way, finding ways to discover myself for a long time. Um, and when I got to do some workshops with the Human Awareness Institute, it focused a lot on uh, communication skills. It focused a lot on authenticity, being able to, to uh, just be able to express who I am. Now, I was at a, uh, in a college class, in a university class, and uh, the teacher said, who was a kind of a mentor of mine, um, she said that she'd spent two weeks with this guy Fritz Perls in, uh, in California, and he was a psychotherapist, and he said that he was going to spend the rest of his life being completely honest, <laughs> just telling the truth. That's what I did. I laughed, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, about, I thought about the girl sitting next to me, and if I was completely honest about what my feelings were, I'd probably get thrown out of the class, right? <laughs> and so it just seemed impossible to me. Mm. But um, it stayed with me. And I recognize that it's the way that I was thinking about the girl sitting next to me. If I had, um, if I treated her with dignity, if I had respect for her, if I cared for her as another human being, then it's these same feelings. But I would be able to say the feelings in ways that the other person could understand. Mm -hmm. And so communication really becomes ways to share your heart in order to be able to be authentic. Mm. Wow, yeah. So then you're on a mission to be honest yourself? Well, yeah, I have been, you know? And so whenever I find myself in a situation where I'm not being true to myself, I, I, I just notice that. First of all, a, an important thing is just to get rid of the guilt around it or the sense of responsibility around it, you know? Somebody says to me, uh, do you want to go to dinner with me on Friday night? And I say, no, I can't. I blah, 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 blah. Truth is, it's not can't. The truth is, it's my priorities, and going to dinner with you on Friday night is not my priority. Uh -huh. um, so I just notice. I notice my language around that. I notice how often we use the word can't uh -huh. when, when it's really hiding something. Uh -huh. And how can I actually be able to be truthful to you and be honest and be myself and still be able to treat you with respect and have you feel feel good about yourself you know right mm -hmm. so instead of i can't first of all i you know you've just asked me to <laughs> you've just asked me to dinner you haven't actually asked me you have just asked yeah, well, me to dinner yeah well you're going into this hypothetical <laughs> right, eric yeah. would, would you like to come to dinner with me um you know thank you thanks for asking and what I'm doing actually is recognizing that you've put yourself out, that you've put yourself in a place where you could be rejected. And so I just want to acknowledge that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's starting with a thank you is a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you and no, not this time. Yeah. Wow. And we don't hear that very often, do we? We hear the excuses, yeah. the apologies, right. but not the truth of the no. Yeah, and we don't hear recognizing a person's uh, rejection recognizing that a person has taken a risk, you know, just, just to acknowledge the person for that has a lot of effect on the other person. Right. Yeah. Right. So you have 
you know, since university days, this has been a, an ongoing thing to learn how to effectively communicate. Is that, would you say? I, I wouldn't have put it th those words. I've been exploring myself. What is it about, you know, well, first of all, one of the big things was about um, commitments, getting married and making commitments to be honest with each other and commitments to be true to each other and commitments for this and commitments for that. And um, sometimes in those commitments, I'd be putting people in impossible places. Like maybe she's become attracted to someone else. Maybe she's had some kind of experience that I would feel terribly guilty about. So she won't be honest with me or true, tr tell me the truth. So that commitment to be honest and true to each other gets discarded, okay? So for me, what happens is how can I make a space for the person I'm with to be themselves? How can I make a space uh, so that they don't have to be untruthful to me? How can I make a space so that they're comfortable just being themselves? And I look at myself and I go, well, my jealousy's standing in the way. So I think a lot of when you talk about, you know, my dedication, my dedication has been to discovering myself, discovering what has been holding me back, and discovering along the way that love for me has become um, rather than an amount or rather than a need. And I hear people say love means that I can satisfy everybody, the other person's, all of the other person's needs. Mm. You know, love means for me that you know, the other person is everything to me. Well, I was feeling love, but that wasn't it. <laughs> You know, um, and I and I discovered that love actually for me is a space. It's a place. It's it's a way to allow me to be myself and you to be yourself. Great. Yeah. And you know, we're going to take a break there and come back to uh, more interesting insight on love, communication, intimacy. We'll be back. Welcome back to Awakening Within. Today we are discussing the importance of effective communication skills in creating meaningful relationships. We're also looking at the importance of vulnerability as a pathway to intimacy. My guest, Eric Nagler, is here to shed light on what this, is all real, what this all really means. So let's pick up where we left off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talked about how people have such a hard time with being honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And why is that? We live in a society that, where there is so much fear and so many expectations upon us and so many stories that we've been taught and we've been told. Um, we, we hold ourselves in and it's really difficult to be authentic. Um, when we're, with our work with the Human Awareness Institute, one of the things we want to do is to be able to create safety among people uh, with people rather than without people. When we're being intimate these days, it's like we're only intimate with our partner, we're only intimate with our family, and everybody else says you have to be careful. And, and we're told all the time, you know, be careful walking down the streets, strangers, and, be, and, oh. and learn how to say no and all those things, which are all necessary and important in our society. But when and how can we expand on our community and be intimate within an expanded community? And so we look at that. We look at ways that we can be safe with each other. For example, one of the things that we do uh, at High, at the Human Awareness Institute, is we have a way of hugging. Okay. Um, people need touch, yes. and yet we're so deprived of it so much in our society. There are only these people that we can touch. And um, I, I just remembering that in, in the turn of the last century, the the germ theory was a big thing and nurses were told never to touch the babies because you might be giving them germs and there was a certain a certain mortality rate and then along came a doctor who said this is terrible we need to be touching babies we need touch and put the babies on a program of of being cuddled and held by the nurses and the mortality rate dropped you know right. touch is something we need to live yes so one of the things that happens, for example, with a hug, have you ever had a hug that, that you didn't like? 
uh -huh. either because it was too needy or because it went to the wrong places or there was expectation. Uh -huh. So one of the things we do about hugging is that this is a hug that has no expectations. That if I'm with somebody who's been to a, a Human Awareness Institute workshop, I know what, they know exactly what I mean if I ask them for a hug. It's just a way of connecting our hearts together. That's all it is. Right. And so it starts, it starts with making eye contact, you know, mm -hmm. and making sure permission, you know, making sure I have permission, you have permission to, to share a hug. We never ask sometimes, you know. Yeah, we often just, hey, yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. And then to share our hearts, which uh, just share this vulnerable. One time somebody said, no, my, your heart's on your left and stuck, stuck their heart. No, it's just to be able to share this tender place. Mm -hmm. And if one person's a different height, then the other person has elevators on, in his legs to come down mm -hmm. um, so that we can just share a heart space together, maybe take a breath together. Mm -hmm. And the hug is over when the first person lets go. Okay. Do you ever have one of those hugs yeah. where they don't let go? Yeah. The hug is over when the first person lets go. And if you want more, then find a place or a way to get more, but to respect this person who's ready to let go. Right. And then to reestablish eye contact right. and to say thank you. Okay. So it actually has a form, okay? I, I, say, I make eye contact, I ask permission, we share our hearts, it's over when the first person lets go, we make eye contact and say thank you. Okay. And I get dozens of hugs, you know, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm in my community. Okay, should we try it? Can sure. we try it? Okay. okay, so let's stand up. What if I don't want a hug? Let's just try that and see what happens, okay? <laughs> Do you want a hug? No. No. Oh. Oh dear. What's the matter? <laughs> you know, um, the hug is about you, right? right? The, whether or not you want the hug is about you. Right. You know? um, it's not about me. That's a really important thing to get. And I've been, you know, taking workshops for twenty years, and I, I still have difficulty recognizing that when you say no, I don't have to take that on. I don't have to feel, right. you know, terrible or rejected. Yeah, well, I thought I'd just try it. I mean, you said, you know, we're often not honest. So what if I yeah. was honest and said right. I didn't want a hug? Yeah. You're saying your job is to not take that personally. Absolutely, yeah. Right, rather than you going into what's wrong with me, why wouldn't she want to hug me? Right. And I find that's a really difficult thing because we tend just to automatically take it on ourselves. So it's just something to practice constantly. So thanks for giving me the opportunity <laughs> yeah. to hear no. Um, and you know, why, do, why did you not want to have a hug? Maybe, maybe you've had 15,000 hugs already and, and another one you wouldn't be able to take in. You know? right. maybe, maybe you are feeling so sorry for yourself and wallowing in such self-pity Right. That would I to give you a hug, it would take you out of that comfortable place of misery. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because I'm happy being miserable right now, <laughs> yeah. and don't yeah, don't wreck my yeah, pity party exactly. or whatever. Right, right. The point is that it's about you, you know. Right, yeah. right. Something else that we that we experience at high is we really talk about choice. You've made a choice to say no, right. and we recognize and really want to encourage people to be at choice from moment to moment. So now, from moment to moment, I could choose a yes now. And I'm gonna take a chance. Okay. I'm gonna take a chance. Okay. So, hi, could I have a hug, Jill? I'd love a hug. Oh, let's do that. <laughs> hmm. Thank you. So I just had to bend my knees only a little bit because I'm, I'm pretty short too. But, but that's an important thing just to, to share your heart. Right, to be right at the same yeah. heart space. Yeah. So a lot of what happens around intimacy in the real world is expectation. You know, we've had a hug. Now I can hug you the next time. No. You know, we've had a hug. Now we can go out together. We've we, what? What? Any of those expectations? It's really good to just let go of them. Right, and just let a hug be a hug. Yeah, yeah, um, and any kind of intimate experience, just be it. You know, that there not be an agenda to everything, mm -hmm. in terms of when people are communicating with each other, in terms of when people are being, are being authentic with each other, that it not have expectations. So we're always at choice, moment to moment, and we hope you choose to come back after the break.
Welcome back. What a powerful discussion we're having here on relationships. And if you're just joining us now, you're not too late to be enlightened on some essential information on creating a meaningful and intimate relationship. My guest, Eric Nagler, is here, and I asked him before the show if he could, if we could do some sort of demonstration, and he suggested active listening. So. Okay, so active listening is really powerful way of communicating with your partner or really with anybody. Okay. And what it, the fundamental is that there's a person who's speaking and that person has the floor. Okay. And the person who's listening, their job is to make sure that they hear the other person. Okay. And the person who, and giving the other person an opportunity to, t to totally um, empty out. Right. Sometimes I don't know if what's I don't know what we're gonna, how we're going to demonstrate or what's going to happen, but sometimes in in a in an argument, for example, mm -hmm. um, one person is angry at the other person, and then it escalates because then this person defends themselves mm -hmm. and, and then gets angry in return or or is a sorry or, mm -hmm. and the and the focus gets comes back and forth and back and forth. Now, in in my house, very often, if one of us is angry, the other one just listens. Mm. Um, and makes sure that they understand and makes sure that the other person has the opportunity to, to completely empty out. And it's not my job to defend myself or if I'm the listener to, to make excuses or any of those things, it's not my job. Right, your job is to listen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wanna try it? Sure, let's try it. Okay. Okay, <laughs> so, so I'm gonna have an issue okay. that I bring to you. Yeah. And so I'm, so I'm clear. So I get, I get the floor. Yeah. Okay. I like this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So um, an issue happening right now for me mm -hmm. is um, here I am down in the city taping a show and right. my son's at home sick. Right. And I'm feeling guilty uh -huh. being here because I should be with him. Yeah. And, um, you know, what kind of mom leaves their kid sick on the couch right. to go to work? Right, so you've got that story about not being the best mom. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Uh, yeah, well, it just feels, like it just feels rotten, uh -huh. you know, that it's, um, like, who am I to put myself first? Uh-huh, so it's, it's about, it's important for you to sacrifice to your son, to their needs. Is that what you're saying? Well, now that you say that, it doesn't really sound true, but I think uh -huh. that's what I was believing. Uh-huh, right. It's interesting to hear you articulate what I was thinking for me to hear myself. Uh-huh, well, that's what I heard, so that's though I just, you know, right. repeated it back. Right, yeah. So how do I deal with the guilt? Or actually, mm. then that's not active listening anymore, is it? Yeah, well, if I, w if I was keeping to active listening, I would say, I hear that you're in the question. I hear you're in the question about how to deal with that guilt. Right. Yeah. Do so you want to just f stop right there for yeah, a second? Yeah, yeah, okay. So first of all, if I don't tell you my idea of how you should deal with your guilt, I'm really trusting you. I'm putting you in a place of trust that you know how to take care of yourself. Um, and by just feeding back what I, what I had heard you say, gave you, it, I was like a mirror for you. Mm -hmm. And it gave you an opportunity to suddenly see something that you hadn't, hadn't looked at before. Right, right. So whatever, what actually often happens, just as it did here in active listening, is that if all I do is listen, um, you'll, come to, you'll, you'll be able to go deeper than if I was giving you advice. Or right. if I was taking, oh yeah, you know, talk about guilt. I've got a guilt story for you. <laughs> and all of a sudden. And then making it all about you. Yeah. Right. And then I lost the floor. Yes. So to speak. Like, mm -hmm. you know, now it's not about mm -hmm. me anymore. Right? And if you think about it, if, I don't know, if people think about their daily lives, how often do we just give somebody else two minutes to just speak? Mm. You know? And in active listening, it's often more than two minutes because you're not just speaking, but I'm also needing to find out what, make sure that I understand what you're saying and perhaps find out more. Mm -hmm. So you have lots of time to, we don't do that generally. If, if, no. you, and if, if, if you think about your relationship, I'll, I'll tell you what happens for me. You know, what happens for me is my, my wife, Diana, um, 
she'll say, I had a lot of trouble with my knee today. And I'll say, well, did you put the blah, blah on it? Or can I give you a massage? Or yeah. all of those things. Yeah, and I'm, well, if you did that long walk, then that's why it's hurting. And Yeah, oh, oh that's the guilt one. That's yeah, a good yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> I generally do the fix one. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, so, and so now I'm fixing it. And I haven't really had an opportunity to hear what really is going on for her. All I heard was one sentence. Right. So and if she went. says, I had a, lot of, had a lot of trouble with my knee today, and I say... Uh huh. So it felt bad, right? And then she has an opportunity to continue talking. Um, and then she might get to, you know, there were things that I, there were things that I shouldn't have done, you know, that I feel badly about having done. And in any way, coming to her own realizations about how she's dealing with her knee and what's happening for her. Mm -hmm. As a man, I think I think it's a I think it's a sex-linked characteristic that we need to fix things. Right. And I. That's the thing I'm working on in my relationship is letting go of fixing because it really gives the other person, the, uh, it trusts the other person to be, come up with their own solutions. Right. Yeah. And just to really hear another person right. rather than get caught up in the story of what you have to come up with to fix. Yeah, exactly. Right? So you get to be, you are fully present mm -hmm. and for your wife when you're listening, mm -hmm. just listening or mm -hmm. doing active listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we do that uh, um, at high a lot. We, lo those are some of the s kinds of skills that we experience and that we practice. Right. One of the neat things about the workshops that we do is that rather than talking about it, we have an opportunity to actually practice everything. Because right. you really learn by doing right. as opposed to listening. Yeah. So in a weekend workshop, there's comparatively little talking that's coming from the floor. It's mostly us well, hey, okay, let's try active listening. Let's see what that's like. Guiding people through this exercise like what we just did. Yeah. So if the viewers wanted to get a hold of you about doing a workshop in the Ontario area, right. how would they do that? Well, the easiest thing would be to just go to eric at ericnagler.com. If you have my name, then you have my, my email right. um, or, and you have my website. And that would be the easiest because one of the things that we do, it's mostly around Ontario, but it's in other, I mean around Toronto, but it's in other places in, in Ontario and through the Midwest as well in the East Coast, is we have two and a half hour mini workshops where people have an opportunity to just get a taste of what the weekend workshop is about. Okay. Right. And like, I'll, so I'll lead a, a, a mini workshop and, and we'll do some one-on-one -on -one stuff and we'll do some sharing. We'll do the hug sharing for example and we'll do some other ways for us to be intimate with each other um, and be safe with each other even though the people in the in the mini workshop are maybe strangers with each other we go away after two after two hours with a strong sense of of knowing each other you know if right. intimacy means into me you see then we go away from that workshop being seen and seeing people Wow. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Yeah. Say that and again. Into. Into me, you see. Intimacy. Into me, you see. Wow. And that yeah. really is the definition of intimacy. Isn't I it? think so. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much You're for welcome. coming in and sharing this information. Thank you for watching, and we hope that you have taken something from this on what you can do to create greater intimacy in your lives.